the Sri Lanka Buddhist temple in central Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia was established in the year 1917. And uh, until this year, 2022, we are 105 years old. So I'll be uh, talking in three different sessions, okay, uh, starting with the history, the infrastructure, and followed by the current activities. This is actually uh, our logo for our 100 year anniversary. Yeah? And uh, there's two uh, registered associations at the Sri Lanka Buddhist Temple Centre, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. That is uh, Sri Jayanti Association, which I'm the president currently, and Sri Jayanti Welfare Organization. And Sri Jayanti Association is the one that actually owns the land. Uh, uh, and the infrastructure of the temple, owns the temple, that manages the temple. And we also organize uh, all the religious activities. Uh, later on, we established the Sri Jayanti Welfare Organization just to focus on the welfare activities uh, of the temple. Okay, this, here you can see the photograph of the temple uh, in our logo. This is the main temple building. You can see it with the stupa. Okay, then you can see the entrance to the temple here. The background, you can see the Bodhi Shrine. And at the side here, uh, nearer to the to the main road, you can see the our memorial tower. So I'll talk more about all these infrastructures as I go along. And as I said, the Sri Lanka Buddhist Temple, there's uh, the two societies. Uh, uh, one society is Sri Jayanti Association, and another one is Sri Jayanti Welfare Organization. And the vision of the Sri Lanka Buddhist, the address of Sri Lanka Buddhist Temple is Lot 85, Jalan Sentu. 15, 1000 Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. And this is our email address. We do no longer have this website, but we are now currently using uh, Facebook. And uh, you want to know more about the temple, please visit our official Facebook site. Huh? And uh, the vision of the Sri Lanka Buddhist temple is cultivating noble lives okay, through the understanding of the four noble truths and the practice of the noble eightfold part. And uh, how do we de define no noble lives or noble it's uh, practicing the two virtues of Buddhism, that is uh, wisdom and also compassion. Okay, and uh, these two societies, Sri Jayanti Association, will look into the wisdom aspects uh, of practicing the, the Dhamma uh, by teaching, uh, giving Dhamma talks, and also uh, conducting meditation retreats and doing other uh, uh, Dhamma related activities. And Sri Jayanti Welfare uh, Organization will concentrate on the compassionate aspects. Uh, of the Sri Lanka Buddhist temple by organizing all the welfare activities uh, for the good of all the uh, Malaysians. So this is how we are uh, planning to cultivate noble lives among uh, the dev devotees of the temple by being wise and also and uh, acting uh, on our compassion. I'll start with part one of, uh, of my presentation, which is history. Okay. In the beginning on 26 October 1917, a piece of land at Sentul was presented to the singular Buddhist community by the railway administration. This railway administration at that time was uh, actually run by the British. Yeah? In the year 1921, a temple was constructed on this land with the name Sri Lanka Buddhist Temple. On 20 August 1930, a new piece of land at Sentul was given by the railway administration. And the Sri Lanka Buddhist temple was rebuilt on this land until today. Actually, the, the temple that, that was initially uh, uh, constructed, uh, that was given to us in 1970, the land was uh, uh, somewhere around where it is, Jalan Haji Saleh now, in Sentul, you know, which is quite near to the, to the temple. And uh, also, uh, later on, we shifted to, to where we are now, you know, at Lot 85, Jalan Sentul after the 1920. So uh, I just like to tell you a little bit other than brothers Ang's introduction uh, to me. I, I also like to add that uh, me, brother Ken Nelson, uh, I lived most of my life at Sentul. Huh? I, I, I was from Sentul and uh, early part of my life, I lived just walking distance from the Sri Lanka Buddhist Temple Sentul. And now even I live maybe a 15 minute drive away from uh, the Sri Lanka Buddhist temple in Sentul. So I, 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 I saw at least 50 years of the history of the temple and experienced it by myself, you know, at least 50 years of the history of the temple. Uh, we have chief, three chief monks of the Sri Lanka Buddhist temple. And at least uh, the first 50 years of uh, 
the Sri Lanka Buddhist temple in Sentul. You can see the photographs later. Mainly the people who visited this, uh, the temple was singular Buddhists. The singular Buddhists who lived around Sentul and around Klang Valley, and mainly those who lived in Sentul and worked in the, the railways uh, in Sentul. And you can see the photographs, at least the, 50 year, the first 50 years of history of the temple. Uh, only the singlest Buddhists used to visit this temple. And uh, one of the reasons is not many people knew there was actually a Buddhist temple in Sentul. And uh, the, the road, the roads to the, the temple was not in a very good uh, good condition for the cars to travel. And it's not in a very prominent place. Right? It's not like now where it is uh, next to the Sentul, Jalan Sentul Highway. Huh? Uh, this temple was way, way away, uh, quite away from the main road. So not many people noticed. Yeah, we were among the quarters, uh, the railway quarters, uh, inside, uh, quite inside Sentul. So we had so far two chief monks in the Sri Lanka Buddhist temple. The one you see here, Chief Bhante Pandit Srinivasa, uh, was a chief monk from 1917 to 1951. That is like for 34 years. And the one you see here uh, is a Chief Bhante Gali Dharma uh, the second chief monk from 1951 to 1970. Chief Bhante Pandit Srinivasa left Malaysia in 1951. And Chief Bhante Gale Dharmaswara took over until 1979, where he actually passed away in Malaysia. And I'd like to mention something about Chief Bhante Pante Srinivasa because uh, he played in a very important part in uh, the legacy of the Singhalese Buddhist, Malaysian Singhalese Buddhists. Uh, I'm uh, like the fourth generation now uh, of the Singhalese Buddhists in Malaysia. Uh, my parents, the third generation Singhalese Buddhists, were taught singular language to speak and write singular language by Pandit Srinivasa. So he, he played a very important influence in the lives of the Singhalese Buddhist community by teaching them a, a singular language to read, to write, and singular culture, and also the Dhamma. Uh, once he was, uh, he, he went away, Reverend Dharma Sarva took over uh, the chief monk. He, I think he was the chief monk for about 28 years. When I was a young, uh, boy visiting the temple in Sentul, he was the chief monk at that time, in the Sri Lanka Buddhist temple in Sentul. And this is the original Buddha statue at the shrine hall in the old temple building. You know? It's a Burmese statue that we brought from, actually from Burma. And actually the statue is still at our temple. If you go to our new Bodhi shrine, on the roof of the Bodhi shrine, you can feel, still see this uh, Buddha statue. This is the Buddha statue. Most of us prayed in the temple, you know, in the early years. And these are some, I'll go through some photographs. The temple in the early years, annual general meeting, 1925. This was the first piece of land, huh? this photograph was taken. You can see the shrine hall at the background. Then later you can see in the current piece of land, singular classes, price giving day, 1932. You know? And if you notice the, the, the structure of the shrine hall in the earlier land and this land, it's very similar. Huh? The arch architecture is very similar. On 23rd February, the, there was opening ceremony of a singular school uh, just next to the shrine hall. They, they, they built a singular school you know, for uh, singular classes to be conducted by Chief Bhante Pandita. And this is another photograph taken on 23rd February 1945. You can see, you can see Chief uh, Bhante Pandit, uh, Pandita sitting here, and you can see a very big a community of singlies Buddhists. Uh, you can see the classroom at the background, uh, in the background. And then this is the opening ceremony of the singular school on 23rd February 1947. You can see the students and the teachers and with Chief Bhante Pandit uh, sitting in the, in the center. The temple in the early years, the of temple in 1951. Now Chief Bhante Pandit is no longer there. Now you can see Chief Bhante Dharma Sura, he's, he's the one sitting here in these photographs. In 1951, another photograph, devotees of the temple, 1951. And Sri Janti Association was established, registered on 13th March, 1951. Actually, there was uh, two earlier versions of Sri Janti Association. Version one, version two was, which was actually discontinued, you know, by the registrar societies. The version three is the one that is surviving until today. Okay, so, so this year, we will be celebrating our 63rd anniversary of Sri Jayanti Association. This is another photograph taken in the temple 
in the early years, uh, Vesak uh, Day 19, 1962. So the temple in the early years, on a, this is one of the biggest group of people in the old photograph scene. It's a huge Singlish Buddhist community you can see in this photograph. It's a very huge uh, community. And this photograph was taken in 1960. And you can see the word Sri Lanka Buddhist temple written in the signage. Yeah? In the background is the old temple building. And this is uh, possibly in, in the morning after the all night chanting or in the evening before the all night chanting started. You can see many Burmese monks also down there and Thai monks other than the singular monks. In the temple in the early years, 10 months at establishment of the Sima in 1967. Uh, the Sima area uh, now is at the, at the Bodhi Shrine. Huh? This is the old, the old temple building. There's another photograph of the temple in the early years, cut in at the old temple. At the Sima area. And another photograph, uh, all night chanting, a group photograph in 1974. You can see the, the crowd here is a little bit smaller than the earlier one. In 1966, and you can see even a few Chinese devotees in this photograph. So at this at this point, you can see uh, uh, even a uh, non singlish Buddhist coming to the temple already in 1974. Many of them found out about this temple through the Buddhist Mahavihara and Brickfields. Uh, that's where they found out there's another Sri Lankan temple uh, in Sentu. Uh, there were third chief uh, high priest, is Chief Bhante Sarnankara. He arrived at the Sri Lanka Buddhist Temple in 1984. So now he's uh, here for now, uh, like about 38 years. Huh? On 9 June 2000, he was conferred the title Chief Monk of the Sri Lanka Buddhist Temple, sent to Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. And on 29 January 2007, he was conferred the honorary title huh? Sangha Kriti Sri and appointed the Chief Adikarana Sangha Nayaka of Malaysia, Chief Judiciary Monk of Malaysia. It is a photograph of him. He has been here since 1984. Huh? So like 38 years. So uh, I think many of you all are familiar with him. Uh, he's a very friendly monk, very energetic, and always willing to uh, serve the devotees. Huh? Uh, his charisma has attracted a lot of uh, devotees to our temple. And these are some of the activities at the old temple. Okay, this is a lantern dis display during Vesak at the Old Temple. Vesak Day celebrations at the Old Temple. Sunday Dhamma School classes in progress uh, in, the, in the hall in the Old Temple building. Uh, next to the Shrine Hall, in front of the Shrine Hall, we had a hall uh, where we conducted all the activities. And the side of the temple, we had a piece of land uh, with grass on it. We had a Sunday Dhamma School sports day. And uh, we had the all night chanting pavilion. There's two examples of the all night chanting pavilion in the hall. Every year, when we have all night chanting, we construct a different pavilion, different uh, uh, different uh, designs. Uh. It's also known as a Pirit Mandapay uh, in Singhala, all night chanting pavilion. And in the year, on 11 June 1995, uh, the Sri Jayanti Association, together with uh, Chief Reverend and the monks, we, we, we initiated the registration of the Sri Jayanti Welfare Organization. Uh, they'll be around 27 years this year. And to focus just on organizing the welfare activities of the temple, take care of the com compassion aspects of the temple. Some these are fun, some photographs of the old temple building. Okay, this is a photograph taken from outside, from the lane outside. And most of the time, the cars are parked outside. Uh, it's not much space to park cars inside the temple like now, you see. On here, you can see the hall of the old temple building. And over here, you can see uh, our Bodhi shrine. Bodhi shrines and the Bodhi tree is very, very important for Sri Lankan Buddhist temples. And we had three entrances, okay? Uh, this is the first entrance that enters to the hall, the center entrance to which enters to the temple compound, and the, and the third entrance that enters to the board. Holy Shrine. Huh? This is another photograph from another angle from the road, which is in the front of the temple. You can see this, this gate that enters to the Bodhi Shrine. 
some of y'all might, might have been to this temple, huh? the old uh, temple we had. And from the back, and uh, this photograph is taken from, from the pavement where the LRT link is now. Huh? You can see the photo, good photograph at the back of the Bodhi shrine with the Bodhi tree huh, jutting out. And you can see the side of the old temple building. This, this room here is where the Sri Jayanti Association uh, management committee had their meetings and where they kept all their documents. Huh? And if you take notice, there is a ravine, a ravine here, you know, ravine until the drain, you know. Uh, one way that we created more space in the temple is when we build, build the new temple, we put soil onto this space here where the ravine, from the ravine until to the, the drain. And that uh, gave us a lot of extra space for the new temple building. You can see the ravine here, huh? the ravine, the photograph from, from where the LRT uh, link is now. And you can see the Bodhi Shrine here, okay, and the old temple building. And this photograph is taken from a distance, the Bodhi Shrine, the old temple building. And also you can see a glimpse of the Sivan Temple, huh? which is a temple that is older to the Sri Lanka Buddhist Temple in Central, which is just next to, to our temple, the Sivan Temple. This, I, I told you, the Bodhi, uh, the Bodhi tree is very important in the Sri Lankan Buddhist temple. This is the, the, Bodhi, the Bodhi shrine, huh? the old Bodhi shrine. Okay, uh, We have demolished this after we built the main temple building and shifted it to where it is now, the, the, old, the new Bodhi shrine. You can see uh, those days we have, we have uh, Buddha images for sponsorship uh, up here. Huh? And... Uh, we had a Buddha statue here. When you enter through the gate, when you see the Bodhi, Bodhi shrine, uh, you can see a Buddha statue here. And behind this Buddha statue, uh, there was a little the, the space inside the Bodhi shrine where the Bodhi tree is. Uh, that's where we kept our Burmese Buddha statue. You know, when we demolished the old building, we shifted the Burmese Buddha statue into the uh, old Bodhi shrine. And this is a Bodhi Puja. Bodhi Pujas are very important in Sri Lankan temples. Huh? And this is a Bodhi Puja being conducted by the Sri Yanti Lady section huh? at the old Bodhi Shrine. And uh, now I'll talk a little bit of the new temple building, un which was under construction from 1991 to 1996, uh, about five years. Huh? This was the original sketch of the new temple huh, in 1990. Uh, it, it cost us about 2.5 million to build this. Uh, this new building, uh, this new temple. You can see the stupa still being constructed. You can see in the sign is the word Sri Lanka Buddhist temple here. Uh, and uh, this is a photograph taken from a distance uh, of the construction going on. And some Sri Lankan monks visiting, uh, visit, visiting our shrine hall uh, is still under construction. Now, uh, I'll talk about part two of our of my presentation, which is a, with regards to the infrastructure of the temple. Huh? New temple building early years. And this is the very early photographs we have, you know, uh, just before the temple's opening ceremony in year uh, 2000. Between 1996 and year 2000, we did a lot of beautification works in the temple. Huh? All the, the temple was actually constructed uh, and all the designs were done by, according to Sri Lanka Theravada Buddhism architecture, you know. And all the artisans that were involved in the in the beautification work, huh? in the in the drawings and the carvings you see, and the making of all the structures like the stupa and all that, and the Buddha main Buddha statue was done by Sri Lankan artisans, you know, uh, professional artisans that we brought from Sri Lanka. So this temple looks like very much like a Sri Lankan temple huh? when you go to Sri Lanka. It looks very much like a Sri Lankan temple in Sri Lanka. This is our stupa. Okay, it's about 18 meters high with the Buddha relic right on top. And it's above the Buddha statue in the shrine hall. Huh? It's just about, and it's in a bell shaped stupa. It can be seen from, from a great distance uh, from the temple to show that uh, this temple is a Buddhist temple. Huh? And these are some of the early photographs of the entrance to the temple. And you can see the drawings that was made around the 
main temple building. Some of y'all might not have noticed it. It's the drawings of the life of the Buddha. So if you next time you go to the Sri Lanka Buddhist temples and please take a look at all the drawings. Uh, these are done by Sri Lankan artisans uh, of the life of the Buddha and all the walls around the, the main temple building. You can see more of the drawings. Now to more new photographs, new temple building current photographs. Okay. Our temple is situated uh, at uh, Lot 85, Jalan Sentula, 50,000 Kuala Lumpur, Sri Lanka Buddhist. And just next to us is the Hindu temple, the Sivan temple. And next to Sivan temple, there's this convent school. Huh? And just across the convent school, there's the Sentul Raya shop lots. Okay, now in front of the Sri Lanka Buddhist temple here, now you have the Fennel, huh? Sentul East Fennel uh, project by YTL. So there's many ways to come to the temple. Okay, one way is coming to the LRT. You take the LRT and stop at the last stop in Sentul, which is LRT Sentul Timo. You can get down and just walk towards the temple. Huh? Another way is coming to the uh, Jalan Sentul, huh? where the police station, you can see the police station there. Okay, and you pass the last out school, MBS school, and then uh, you go straight. It's a, it's a one way street. Huh? You pass Sentul Raya shop lots and you turn into you turn, you make a make, make a U turn. You pass the convent school, the Hindu temple, and come to the Sri Lanka Buddhist temple. Another way to come is through the Federal Highway. There's another link, you know. Uh, there's a highway, you know. And I, I don't know how many of you all, if you all know or not. There's now a, a highway from the Federal Highway that links. It's called Central Link. You can see the word Central Link. You take Central Link. Central Link directs you, you know, the directs you into Sentul and you come to the same place, Sentul Raya shop lots. You take a you make a U-turn and come to the uh, Sri Lanka. And so by doing taking the Sentul link, you bypass and go through all these traffic lights, uh, save you a lot of time. Another way to come to the temple is track through the KTM community train. Uh, and you can stop at Sentul. I, either you can walk through Jalan Haji Sale to Sri Lanka Buddhist Temple, or you can take a, a taxi. Okay, the other famous Okay, structures in Jalan Sentul is the church, uh, the Catholic Church, uh, St. Joseph Catholic Church. And of course, we have the Sentul Market. Okay, this is to give you some idea how to come to Sri Lanka Buddhist Temple and Sentul. This is the layout to our temple. Okay, this is the layout to our temple. When you entered at our temple to the front gate, there's ample space to park your cars inside the temple. Uh, on a normal day, even when we have our usual events, there's ample space to park the cars inside the temple. Only when we we, we, we organize, uh, maybe definitely Besak, there's no space, and also maybe Katina. Other than that, most of the time, and maybe all night chanting also, other than that, most of the events or day to day, there's enough space uh, to park inside the temple compound. So when you enter the temple from the entrance, right on your right is what we call the pagoda or the memorial tower. You go straight ahead. This area here, we have the Kuan Yin Garden, uh, the Kuan Yin statue is. Okay, the next to it is the Bodhi Shrine, where the Bodhi tree is. Okay, this is our new, temp new temple. Uh, this, is, uh, this is the new temple that we have now in, in, uh, in Sentul. Then you turn to the left, you enter into the main shrine hall. This is the main shrine hall. We have a hall next to it called a Dhamma Hall. This is our office in the ground floor. And uh, we have the monks' dining hall right, here, yeah? and next to the dining hall, you have the kitchen and all our storerooms here. Here, all over here, our storerooms. And we also have a pond down here. I don't know how many of you all noticed we have a fish pond here. Next time you go to the Sri Lanka Buddhist Temple and say, please make sure you visit the fish pond. And do you, if you come to this side, if you enter the temple and turn right, you come, you see the Bodhi Shrine, and you see our new te temple building here. You know, it's a new temple building here. And this part here, there's the small part here is the room where the Sri Jayanti Welfare Organization free clinic is. And uh, there's eight bathrooms next to it. Yeah? And we also have now an OKU bathroom for those uh, spacious bathroom for uh, if you have any family members or eight OKU or senior citizens, you can use the OKU bathroom. When we have uh, events like all night chanting, we have a procession in the temple. The procession usually starts from the ground floor of the new building, you know, the procession led by the, uh, the lay leaders of the temple and followed by the monks. It goes, procession goes from the new temple building, enters the shrine hall. We pray a respect to the Buddha statue there and 
we go into the Dhamma Hall and uh, on the stage is our Ona Chantan Pavilion uh, or Pirit Mandape. And uh, another occasion is during Katina, we also have a proce procession in the temple. During uh, Katina at about eight o'clock in the mo morning, uh, we assemble in front, all of us assemble here, you know, you can have uh, up to even 500 people come to the temple, you know. They all assemble in front of the shrine hall and uh, the lead is taken by the temple elders uh, and followed by the devotees who carry all the robes and the requisites and they, they walk this way, they go out through this gate here, this gate here, and they walk until there's another side gate here, we call it the kitchen gate. You turn to the lane behind the temple building and you make three rounds like that. We make three rounds like that, you know, for the for the Katina procession. This year, our Katina, uh, Katina day will be on uh, 6th November. So hope uh, more of you all can come. And hopefully this year we can have the procession. Last year, although it was open for Katina, we didn't, didn't manage to have the procession. So the procession is uh, finished. It, it ends here and we enter the shrine hall, pay our respects to the Buddha statue. We all enter the Dhamma hall and uh, that's where the requisites and the robes are offered to the monks. Uh, we'll have many monks on that day at the temple. Offerings are done and uh, the monk who receives the main Katina rope later will go to the area where the Bodhi shrine is, where the Sima is and uh, one monk will be chosen to get the main uh, rope, a monk who have observed the rains retreats uh, successfully for three months at the temple. I'll talk more about the all night chanting and uh, also the Katina later. This gives you an idea, the layout of a temple. Uh. Just a photograph that's taken from the road, the central, Jalan Central, the entrance to our temple. You can see the stupa and the entrance to the temple. Uh. This we can see all the carvings and designs and drawings uh, that is uh, following the Sri Lankan Theravada Buddhism uh, architecture uh, done by the Sri Lankan art, uh, uh, artisans that we brought from Sri Lanka. This is another photograph from the side taken. Uh, this is this is a water tank uh, in the next compound next to it doesn't belong to the temple. You can see our stupa here. Get a side view of the main temple building. And this is a wide angle photograph of the wide angle photograph of the main temple building. Huh? This is the entrance. You can find two guardian angels or devas uh, carved out you know, at the entrance to the shrine hall. Okay. And there's again the stupa. And the background, you can see uh, these buildings is called fennel, uh, the fennel condominiums uh, uh, constructed by YTL. Fennel East, Central East, it's called. There's about, uh, I think, four, four of the, these condominiums, you know. And this is our main temple building. This is the ground floor, as I mentioned earlier. And this part here is where our monks dining hall here. And this first floor and second uh, and the second floor consists of all rooms, you know, for our monks. There's close to about 20 rooms, you know, aircon rooms for our monks to stay, you know. And sometimes we can have up to 20 monks in our temple. Many, many of them come from Sri Lanka. And you can go on when during Vesak and all that, you can go up to 30 to 40 monks. Huh? And you can see at the side here the, the memorial tower. So this is a, a closer photograph of the entrance to the shrine hall. Huh? You can see the, the guardian devas here carved out here. And you can see the beautiful. Huh? carvings and drawings, that is the lotus, petals, Buddha statue. So when you come to the temple, take a good look at all the beautiful carvings. Uh. And this uh, is our famous Buddha statue in our shrine hall. Uh. Uh, it is eight meters high and it's the largest indoor Buddha statue in Malaysia. And it's, uh, uh, it's recorded in the Malaysian Book of Records uh, and it's in white, total white, and it's made of marble. Uh. This is a wide angle shot of a, of a shrine hall. Okay, on top, the head here, the, this, this circle here, on top here is where the stupa is on the floor on top. Huh? The stupa that I, I showed you all earlier, the bell shaped stupa. And this is our monk's dining hall, photo of our monk's dining hall. It's taken from another angle. The monk's dining hall, the monks have their 
breakfast dane and also their lunch dane in this hall. And only the monks are allowed to eat in this hall. And they are, only, they are the only ones allowed to sit in the chairs and have the breakfast dane and the lunch dane. So the devotees can assemble here to make the offerings and join the, the prayers. But uh, there's another hall that the devotees can go to, you know, to have their, their breakfast and their, their lunch after the dane for, it's been offered to the monks. And this is a wide angle photograph of the temple layout. Eh? You can see here is where our Kuan Yin garden is. This is a Bodhi shrine. This is our new temple building, memorial tower. This is this photograph taken from a higher angle. Okay, you can see the Bodhi shrine, eh? the Bodhi tree can be easily seen here. And uh, the new temple building and the memorial tower. This is a close up of our new temple building. Eh? Now, nearly all our Dhamma activities, the Dhamma talks, meditation retreats, and all that, we have it in the ground floor. Eh? of the new temple building because it gives us a lot of privacy eh? uh, from all activities that's taking place in the, in the main temple building. And on the first floor, we have uh, Sunday Dumble School classrooms and also two offices, the Sri Yanti Buddhist Institute office and the Sri Yanti Welfare Organization office. And uh, the second floor, we have more Sunday Dumble School classrooms and we have two rooms. Two rooms here uh, for the for this uh, for the nuns visiting nuns to stay, you know. So they the nuns stay in a separate building from where the monks are staying. Uh. The monks stay in the main temple building. The nuns we have nuns who visit quite often and stay for long periods. Of time. So they have rooms here. Two nuns can stay in each room, you know. So about four nuns can stay in the, in the two rooms, and uh, we have a rooftop here where we can have activities. The three janti. Youth section sometimes have activities on the rooftop of the new temple building. And a site here is what I said, the Sri Jayanti Welfare Organization Free Clinic. Huh? It's over here. Huh? And this is a photograph of uh, the pond that I mentioned. Some of you might not have noticed this. This is a fish pond. The fish, you can see the fish in the fish pond. And we also contracted the OKU bathroom, uh, a very spacious OKU bathroom that is, which is next to the uh, new temple building and next to the eight bathrooms. You know? So those of your family members, if any of them OKU come to the temple, please use this bathroom. Uh, it's very spacious and it's made for them. And even if they're senior citizens who, are, who have difficulty using the normal bathrooms, they can use this OKU bathroom. Uh, I added three more photographs to this presentation to just to show you the Fennel, uh, the Fennel project, uh, Fennel Central East, the YTL project. You can see uh, see that the Fennel project totally changed the landscape in Central. Uh. It looks so futuristic, okay, this, this condominium buildings. And uh, you can see it from a great distance. Uh, when you come into Central, you, can, you can't miss it. And the entrance to the Fennel condominiums is just opposite the entrance to our temple. You can see the photographs of the, the Fennel condo, condominiums. Uh, just just in front of our temple. I'd like to talk something uh, now, a little bit about of our Bodhi Shrine. Huh? Because I said the Bodhi Shrine, the Bodhi tree is very important for the Sri Lankan Buddhist temple. Okay, this is our Bodhi tree, which was brought from Sri Lanka, Anuradhapura, which the sampling came from, of course, Buddha Gaya in India. Okay, this is the, the picture of our Bodhi Shrine. Remember the beginning of our talk, I mentioned about the Burmese Buddha statue that was originally in the first uh, shrine hall in the old temple building. It's now on the rooftop. Okay, you were shifted to the old Bodhi shrine, inside the old Bodhi shrine. Once we demolished the old Bodhi shrine and we built this new Bodhi shrine, uh, it went to the, to the top on the roof. Uh, you can still see it there. Uh, it's covered by glass uh, for protection. And you can see the Bodhi tree, this beautiful Bodhi tree in the center. And you can see another two stupas here. And uh, you can see all the Buddha statues here. There's a lot of Buddha statues inside this Bodhi shrine, which is up for sponsorship. Huh? One way you collect donations for the temple. And this is an uh, internal photograph, the, the main Buddha statue in the Bodhi shrine. And these two small Buddha statues uh, of monks are actually originally from our old temple building. You can see. 
the many many Buddha statues uh, that is many different different size and different type of Buddha statues displayed inside the Bodhi shrine. And the roof of the Bodhi shrine has these beautiful drawings also. And uh, the whole Bodhi shrine has a PA system because sometimes we have quite a big uh, Bodhi pujas in the Bodhi shrine. We have a PA system and even air cons in the, in the, inside the Bodhi shrine. This is a night photograph taken at night. Huh? This uh, these statues are what you call lighted Buddha image. When you, on the lights at night, it gets lighted up, you know, the Buddha statues. You can see here. Okay. And these are more photographs of the Buddha statues huh, in the, inside the Bodhi shrine. This is a photograph taken from the outside, taken from the outside of the Bodhi shrine. And uh, there are statues ready. There's four in this row here, another four statues. These are all Buddha statues from uh, different different countries in the world, you know. There's altogether 24 Buddha statues, six times four, four each in one uh, row has four, there's six rows. So there's 24 Buddha statues. So when you go to the Bodhi Shrine, please take a look at this book, these beautiful Buddha statues that is uh, placed, 24 of them just around the, the Bodhi tree. Yeah? And we have another unique uh, uh, thing about our Bodhi Shrine is we have this, stained glass drawings, you know. There's two on each side of the Bodhi Shrine, two drawings on it, and one at the back, you know. Altogether, there's five. You can see this beauty, especially at night when you're on the lights, it looks very beautiful, the stained drawing. This shows the Sangamita Teri bringing the Bodhi sampling uh, to Sri Lanka. And this is another uh, beautiful drawing, uh, glass stained drawings uh, of uh, Buddha giving the first sermon. Uh, the Buddha Gaya. And there's another three uh, drawings that uh, maybe next time you go to the Sri Lanka Buddhist tem temple and say, please go and have a look at what are the pictures, the other three pictures. These are some drawings that, that was done by a Sri Lankan monk who was staying in our temple, who was an artisan. He did this drawing on the roof. So when you go to the Buddhist shrine, take a good look at these beautiful drawings uh, on the roof. And this is a beautiful and unique photograph during our Chinese New Year. Who, uh, we lit up the Bodhi shrine. Uh, with, uh, with uh, what they call that, uh, red lanterns. So the whole Bodhi Shrine is lit up with red lanterns. And if you are interested in uh, sponsoring any of the Buddha stages of the Bodhi Shrine, it comes in many, many sizes, uh, four inch, five inch, six inch, 14 inch, and many different designs. You have to go to the temple office and choose uh, which one you want. You just have to take, make a one-time payment. Uh, you can write your name there, name of your family or name of your parents who have passed away. And you just have to make a one-time pay payment and it's there forever. Huh? And we also have the lighted Buddha image where you can sponsor for a yearly payment of 50 ringgit. These are some ways we collect donations for the temple. And this is a memorial tower I saw you. This is a photograph, uh, it's a closer photograph. There's a ground floor, first floor, second floor. This is also designed by the Sri Lankan artisans, there are many beautiful drawings you can see, you know, in the, the architecture and the memorial, uh, the drawings of the memorial tower and the carvings all by done by Sri Lankan artisans. Huh? You can even have a good look here in this photograph of our arch, huh? our entrance. You can see Buddha statue there, devas and uh, uh, eight, eight wheel, last huh? symbol huh? of the noble eightfold part. And this is uh, Chief Bandi Saranakan doing a blessing ceremony yeah, inside the memorial tower at the ground floor. Okay, so the memorial tower this is a memorial tower poster. Uh, it is sponsor memorial tablet tablets in memory of your loved ones. The memorial tablets displayed in the glass cabinets will be kept safe and secure. All memorial tablets will bear the photograph of the departed loved ones and their personal party. You can see a, a sample, you know, of the memorial tablet, you know. This is the shape of a body leaf. And uh, you can put one photograph of somebody as uh, a loved one who have, who have passed away. Or if your both your parents have passed away, you can put both their photograph in one memorial tablet. Okay. We see, still have a lot of, uh, at least some, not a lot in the ground floor. We have some memorial tablets available. But on the first floor and second floor, uh, I think we have more memorial tablets available. You just have to make a one time payment. Okay, this is another way we are collecting donations uh, for the temple and also give a chance for the devotees, you know, 
to keep the memo tablet in behalf of the, the parents who passed away. And these are some photographs of a Kuan Yin garden. As you can see the Kuan Yin. And you must be wondering why do we have a Kuan Yin statue in Sri Lanka Theravada Buddhist temple? Uh, the reason we, we, we decided to have a Kuan Yin garden with a Kuan Yin statue is the, both the chief monk, the monks, and the Sri Jayanti Association Management Committee. Uh, it's a way of saying thanks to, to the many Pure Land Buddhists who come to our temple. Okay? As you know, there's very few Theravada Buddhists in Malaysia, you know. And many of our devotees of a temple are actually from pure land. So it's our and they have made a lot of donations you know, to the temple. So this is one way of us saying thank you to our, to our uh, pure land uh, Buddhist devotees. And uh, another thing is the you saw earlier the Buddha image in the uh, main temple hall, Buddha statue. Uh, that is the Sakyamuni Buddha statue, which uh, also known as the Gautama Buddha statue, huh? which uh, actually uh, represents wisdom. And the Kuan Yin, as we know, represents compassion. So these two statues, the Sakyamuni Buddha statue and the Kuan Yin statue in the temple premises uh, represents wisdom and compassion in a symbolic way. It's another photograph of the Kuan Yin st statue. And this is, a, uh, this is a cover for the protection of the Kuan Yin image. And also you can see a lotus. Uh, this photograph was taken in the evening when the, uh, the lights were on. Uh, there's a lotus at the bottom, yeah? the lotus flower at the bottom. And these photographs are taken at night. And you, you should come and see it at night. It looks very beautiful, uh, especially our temple compound and the Bodhi shrine. It looks very beautiful at night. Now I will talk to you about the activities of the temple. Huh? Every year, at the beginning of the year, and like last year in late December, we release our calendar for the year. You know, in the calendar, you'll have all the full moon and new moon indicated, full moon and new moons, and also all the activities uh, we are going to have for the next year. This is the calendar for 2022. Uh, we have the transference of marriage, Pai Kong Ma, Chinese New Year, Chap Gome. All night chanting, Chembing, Singla New Year, 28 Buddha's Puja, Vesak, uh, Posong Poya, and we also have uh, beginning of Vasa. These are the main events that we listed, and the dates are written there. Huh? So you can keep those three days free. So we give these dates one year earlier huh? so that you, you will keep these dates free. Feel Party Day, Mooncake Festival, these are our main. Uh, what is that uh, Buddhist activities that we have? Katina ceremony and also charity fair organized by Sri Jayanti Welfare Organization. Okay? Of course, the temple is open every day, okay? especially devotees come for the breakfast dhane and also the lunch dhane. And they also come to meet the, the monks for blessings. And our temple is mainly a monk based temple. And uh, we follow a lot of rites and rituals, and especially uh, a place for doing transfers of marriage for your departed loved ones and also for blessings. Huh? And this is our poster, online donations poster, you know. And th these are the things we uh, you can donate throughout the year for Dane, monk's rope. Monk's rope is only, not only you can donate monk's rope during the wasp period or, or the rains retreat period or the katina. You can offer monk's rope throughout the year. Huh? They have giant candle lighted for 24 hours. We have gel candle, we don't have oil lamps anymore. No, we find oil lamps quite difficult to manage. Okay, washing the oil lamps, especially. So now we switch to gel candles, which you find much more cleaner. Uh, we have the illumination of temple for one night, monks' welfare fund, temple maintenance fund, and general donations. Uh, this is how we collect donations for the temple. And uh, our first activity for the month of January is our all night chanting. Huh? This is our publicity poster for the all night chanting. It starts on a Saturday evening. It's usually in the month of January, about uh, two weeks before Chinese New Year, we have it, you know. It starts at about seven o'clock. Uh, at about eight to nine, we have uh, chanting by the Mahayana group, uh, Manju City Buddhist Society from Kajang. And then at about 9.30, we have what I mentioned earlier, the procession, huh? the all night, process night procession. And about 10 o'clock, the monks will start to do the chanting, uh, all night chanting until the 6 a.m. the next next morning. These are some photographs. This is a pavilion 
this was constructed in the year 2019. We also had all night chanting in 2020 before the COVID-19. This photograph is actually the one I'm going to show you is the one from 2019. Yeah? Uh, this is a pavilion. It's constructed by our temple monks and assisted by the temple devotees. And every year, the all-night chanting pavilion is a different one, a different design. Huh? It's done on the on the stage in our main uh, hall, in the main temple building. You can see the staircase also been decorated, and can you can see the inside where the monks sit to do the chanting and all-night chanting. And this is the what you call the period nula. Or the holy trait that will be distributed the next morning after the chanting. And we also have uh, another photograph. Uh, so you can see the internal design, the Buddha statue also placed here. And at the side here, we have a lot of uh, water bottles. Uh, uh, so that the next morning, the devotees will take this water bottle, the blessed bottles, uh, holy water. And this is a photograph at about eight to nine o'clock. The Manju Siddhi group will have uh, the Mahayana group from Kajang will have a jet. There are about 150 of them will come for every all night chanting on Saturday night. You know, this is the chanting they, they will do the Mahayana chanting in front of the Buddha statue in the shrine hall. And this is a photograph of all the devotees from Manju Siddhi sitting in the canopy in front of the uh, shrine hall. This is our procession. Uh, the procession, the, the front of the procession is usually what you call a Tata Karandua or the relic, Buddha relic in stupa, followed by the Buddha statue and followed by the, the great book of protection, uh, the Parita book that will be used for chanting throughout the night. These are the temple elders firing the items, followed by the monks. Uh, and they enter into the into the shrine hall and they, they enter into the temple hall and they go in into the the mandape yeah, or the pavilion, where they will do their chanting. It's a, for, a photograph of all the devotees. The temples are all the temple devotees yeah, who will participate in all night. Many of them stay until six o'clock the next morning. Yeah. And this is a photograph of the monks who are, who are going to be do, the, do the chanting. And sometimes we need to 15 to 20 monks because they take one hour shifts to do the chanting. Take it, you can see the, the, the holy trade water blessed water bottles and we did it we do this once a year huh, in the month of january before the chinese new year. and another uh, celebration is chinese new year celebration this is our publicity poster for the year 2022 where it was open for the devotees to come for blessing service first and second february 2022 and the most unique thing in our temple for chinese new year is the red lantern decoration huh? you can see the whole temple decorated by red lanterns and you can sponsor each of these red lanterns at 50 ringgit each, yeah? and it will displace from the first day of Chinese New Year to the last day, yeah? Chab Gome, yeah? for two weeks. And please come during the Chinese New Year nights and you can see the beautiful ambience at night, yeah? the red lantern uh, exhibition on the trees and all the structures in the temple. Okay? And our trees you can see at the Kwanin area, at our fish pond, you know, and all the trees and all that. Another event we have is Chimbing in the month of April, transfer of marriage with the father of loved ones. This is our publicity po poster for Chimbing in, in April in 2022 this year on photograph. And usually when we have a big, big dani going on in the temple, like Chimbing or Field Piety Day or Big Dani, we use the you have the dani in this hall, not in a monk's dining hall, you know, because there's not enough space there. We use this, this hall for the monks to have the dani. We also celebrate a singular new year. Singlish Buddhists usually celebrate the month of April, somewhere on the 14th of the month. And usually on a singular new year morning, we have breakfast dani for the Sangha. And then we have uh, breakfast for the devotees, and followed by a uh, blessing service. Huh? This is the monks having their dani on singular new year morning. And this is the oil lamps being lighted. Huh? Oil lamps being lighted for singular new year. I'm sorry, uh, this is uh, more, more gel candles are uh, being lighted uh, for the singular new year. And these are some uh, Sri Lankan sweet cakes uh, that they will be on uh, for breakfast, has been offered for breakfast. And as I, I mentioned earlier, we you should now we, we use this hall in the main temple building for devotees to have their lunch, lunch and also their, their breakfast and lunch. Uh, there's a lot of tables and chairs here so they can comfortable eat. They can take the food from the monk's dining hall, which is just next door, and sit down and, and 
have their breakfast and their lunch and get a, a chance for them to have some fellowship activities among the devotees of the temple also. And this is a blessing service on the Singular New Year day. Photograph of a uh, Singular New Year photograph, the community members and also the temple staff. We have a very unique uh, puja called the 28 Buddha's Puja and held in Sri Lankan temples. Huh? Uh, usually held in April, about one or two weeks after the Singular New Year. And we had the one this year, okay, on 23rd April 2022. This is our publicity photograph, uh, poster. And you can see the decoration, the display of the 28 Buddhas. Uh, there's a belief in Sri Lanka Theravada Buddhism. There was uh, 27 Buddhas before uh, Gautama Buddha. Uh, so we have this 28 Buddhas puja that's very unique to Sri Lankan Buddhist temples. So, so you're invited to come for this puja, those who have not participated in it before. These decorations are all done by the Sri Yanti ladies section. You can see the display items, display items. The monks lighting the gel candles huh, before the starting of the prayers, the blessing service. We put a canopy in front of the shrine hall for the devotees to sit because we get quite a big crowd of devotees huh, and then uh, some of them can even sit in the hall. Vesak is our most biggest program in the temple and Vesak is the most difficult program to organize because we get a lot of devotees coming into the temple uh, for Vesak. And this is our publicity post, uh, poster for Vesak. Uh. Uh, we didn't have Vesak this year in 2022 because uh, we couldn't get enough volunteers, you know, because Vesak is very unique at the Sri Lanka Buddhist temple in, uh, in Sentul because we, get, we attract a lot of Hindu devotees to our temple. Many, many of them. So in, as the years has been progressing, more and more devotees have been coming to our temple for Vesak. Uh, those days, the Hindu devotees come only on Vesak nights. Now they even come in the morning, in the afternoon. So the crowd is very huge and we need at least 100 or 150 committed, really committed uh, volunteers you know, to organize Vesak. So it's not an easy program to, uh, to organize at our temple. It's the most challenging program to organize uh, Vesak. And you might also be wondering, why do the Hindus come to our temple for Vesak? Why don't they go to the uh, Christian church for, for something like Christmas and all that? Because it's something to do with their, the belief of their religion. Buddha is the ninth reincarnation, uh, incarnation, ninth incarnation of their god Vishnu. You know? So Buddha is one of their gods, actually. It's the ninth incarnation of their god Vishnu. And they pray to Buddha as the god. That's why Hindus come to the, our temple also to pray to the Buddha, and you get many of them visiting our temple. You know. There's five Hindu temples all around our temple, so you can imagine the amount of Hindu devotees come to our temple, you know, for Vesak. This is a this is a different different banners we print for Vesak. Okay, this is uh, the procession banner. Uh, these are all the different stalls we have uh, for Vesak donation stall, uh, stalls selling flowers, candles, and joysticks. Stalls distributing Buddhist books, uh, free Buddhist books, vegetarian, giving free vegetarian food, uh, both Chinese and Sri Lankan food. Uh, and we have the baby, the baby, uh, baby Buddha, and then the lighting of gel candles and donations uh, for the construction of uh, here for 1929 for construction of the Kuan Yin Garden and uh, sales of Buddha statues. Uh, if anybody want to buy Buddha, this is some of the stalls we have during Vesak. And as I, as I told you, it's a, it's a massive program uh, of Vesak in the Sri Lanka Buddhist temple. Set. We usually have, it takes us about two months to organize Vesak at the temple. And we have two meetings, you know, volunteer uh, meetings, you know, the brief, the volunteer. One is five weeks before the Vesak, another one, one week before Vesak. So, dear brothers and sisters in the Dhamma, those of you all who are listening to this talk, if you are interested, and I hope I appeal to you all for next week's up. Please look out at our, our Facebook. Come and volunteer services uh, as a volunteer for Vesak celebration at Sri Lanka Buddhist Temple in Central. It will be a wonderful experience for all of you. This is a briefing done by me for all the volunteers. You can see we brief them. Uh, we'll train you on what you need to do and brief you in how to conduct yourself during Vesak. And we always print shirts during Vesak. Vesak. Shirts, uh, temple shirts to be given free for the volunteers. Okay, uh, this is a design that was printed in 2014, and uh, nowadays we we print the shirts with collars and also with a pocket, and the back 
photograph of the temple is in, is in color. Huh? Uh, whatever leftover uh, shirts, we sell it at cost to the temple devotees. And uh, on the eve of Vesak, we have our Vesak float procession. Uh, it starts at about 8 o'clock until about 9 to 9.30. This is our Vesak float. And this is only in Jalan Sentul. Uh, it takes about one hour to one and a half hour for the whole procession. But this is a very small uh, float down, a main float con constructed by Sri Jayanti Association. And this is a blessing being done just before the devotees uh, start the procession, a uh, blessing service inside the temple compound. Then you can see many devotees joining the procession uh, in Jalan Sentul. You can see the, the float leading the uh, procession. This is another photograph of the devotees. We have this when the temple went following the devotees uh, in case of any emergencies. And we have a lot of volunteers uh, to guide the, the, the devotees to keep them safe in the road. And this is another photograph taken from on top. Uh, the devotees, you can see a lot of devotees, a lot of youngsters like to come on the Vesak Eve to join the procession. And this is a photograph of the children after the procession is over. The children are walking in into the temple. You can see the Sri Jayanti Buddhist Institute uh, children. Uh, and also this SJBI, Sri Jayanti Buddhist Institute, Float, uh, handheld float. I think they had about one or two of it, you know, constructed, you know, for the children to follow. On Vesak Day itself, we have a huge crowd coming in from six o'clock in the morning to 12 o'clock at night, you know. On Vesak Eve, we start about 6 p.m. until about 12 at night. And mm -hmm. the burning of the gel candle is the most popular, followed by the bathing of the Buddha. You, you must be wondering why we practice the bathing Buddha because we are Sri Lankan. Theravada Buddhist temple. Uh, this is a Mayana, so it is a Mayana ceremony. But uh, uh, as you know, many of the devotees who come to the temple for Vesak, they come for blessings. Uh, and this, this is one way that, 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 that they, they really like the bathing Buddha ceremony and for them to come and bathe the Buddha. And sometimes the queue, okay, although as you can see, there's about five rows, sometimes the queue can go until outside the building. Uh, this is the ground floor of the new temple building. So uh, there are a lot of interest in the bathing of the Buddha by the devotees who come for Vesak. And this is the group of devotees in the shrine hall. Matter of fact, between 10 o'clock in the morning on, and until 2 o'clock, there's practically no space to move in the temple, you know, on Vesak day. The crowd is such so large. So we need a lot of volunteers to help. Uh, these are devotees uh, offering candles, okay, in front of the Bodhi shrine. And this is the Sri Lankan group. Uh, this Sri Lankan group, I choose Sri Lankans uh, uh, who are working in Malaysia, who cook uh, Sri Lankan dishes, you know, to be given free for the divorcee. And they themselves sponsor the, the Sri Lankan food. Uh, it's sponsored by them. And we also have Chinese food uh, cooked by the temple devotees, Chinese temple devotees who also sponsor the food. And it's given free for all the devotees who come. You can see the massive crowd of devotees uh, and the, the uh, the area we serve the food. You can see even ice cream, cakes, soya bean being served. Uh, and the Hindus, it's very important for them. They believe food if, uh, taken from a temple is blessed food. Uh, so it's very important for them to take some food back for their parents who are ill at home or, or people or the family members who can't come to the temple for the Wisak. Uh, so you can see them right packing the food because they believe the food is blessed. Uh, it's, a, it's a Hindu belief. Uh, this is serving of cakes. Huh? And we also have Sri Jayanti Welfare Organization also organizes the blood donation campaign every Vesak huh? in, the, in, the, in the temple hall, in the main temple building. We get about 250 donors huh, every year. It's organized by Sri Jayanti Welfare Organization blood donation camp for Vesak. And we also have the Vasa invitation, July full moon. We had the one in, uh, in the full moon this month. We invited the temple elders, invited about five months to reside at the temple uh, for three months, uh, starting from the full moon of July until the full moon of October, following which we have the Katina in the temple. Uh, between one month of the, after the October full moon, before the next full moon in November, we have to have Katina. And we also have Katina on the last, last Sunday, you know, uh, before the full moon of uh, November. And these are some of the items uh, we offer to invite the monks to observe. Was uh, the rains retreat in the temple for three months. And we also have the Fiel Piety Day, transfer of marriage, departed loved ones in August. This is our 
publicity poster for the field party uh, in uh, for this uh, for 14 August uh, next month. So those of you all who would like to participate in a field party program, please you're welcome to the temple. Uh. It's at 10 a.m. Sunday, 14 August 2022. This is our publicity for the uh, poster. And every year we also have the last uh, year we had Mooncake Festival was in 2019, uh, organized by Sri Jayanti Buddhist Institute. Uh. And this photograph is taken in the main hall, uh, consists of the teachers, the parents, and the children, and also the temple devotees. And this photograph, uh, we had a lantern procession. The children have a lantern procession. The Sri Jayanti Buddhist Institute uh, students you can see them holding the, the lanterns. And finally, we have the Katina Rope Offering Ceremony in November. This year, we'll be having it on 6th November. You are, you are welcome to come to the temple huh, for the Rope Offering Ceremony, which attracts a huge crowd. Okay, our program for the day, this is a 2019 poster. Okay, our program for the day starts uh, at uh, 7 o'clock in the morning, where we, until 8 o'clock, we offer breakfast for the devotees. At 7.30, we have breakfast for the monks. At 8 o'clock, we have the Katina procession. Yeah? And then followed by offering of ropes and requests to the Ma Sangha. And at 9.30, we have the Sangha main Katina rope ceremony at the Sima area at the Bodhi Shrine. Finally, the monk who's chosen to, to wear the main Katina rope will give a Katina sermon at 10 o'clock and followed by 11 o'clock, Buddha Puja, followed by Sangika Dana. Yeah? And also lunch will be provided for devotees. The whole Katina program is from 7 o'clock in the morning until about 2 p.m. So you're welcome to join. Huh? This year is on 6th uh, November 2022. This is uh, 8 o'clock in the morning. Uh, Everybody is assembled. Huh? They have uh, uh, taken their robes and all their requisites. Uh, they have all assembled for the procession. Huh? It starts in front of the uh, shrine hall. You can see the temple elders uh, carrying all the items. Huh? The, Buddha rally, Buddha statue, and of course the main Katina rope. Okay, the procession takes place around the temple, uh, inside the temple compound and the pavement outside the temple. You make three rounds around the temple. You can see the huge crowd, three rounds, and then you enter the shrine hall and you enter to the main hall where the offering of the ropes and the requisites takes place uh, row by row. Everybody they make your offerings uh, during Katina. This is offerings being done row by row by the devotees. Okay, this is a photograph. After the offerings are done, there's a blessing service. We have a lot of monks who come to, uh, for the Katina program. Huh? You can do for because a lot of devotees, we need a lot of monks to be present to make the so the devotees can make the offerings. And finally, we have the the, the monks will gather uh, at the Sima area, which is the Bodhi Shrine. All of them are together, and the devotees can witness this very special ceremony uh, conducted by the monks. You know, when the ceremony is conducted, we are not allowed to enter the Bodhi Shrine. Huh? Uh, it's a very sacred ceremony where the monks will choose one monk deserving uh, to get the rope, you know, the main rope. And this monk must have successfully observed the rain streets for three months, three months, the Sri Lanka Buddhist temple in Sentu. Okay, in, in the month of December, uh, Sri Jayanti Welfare Organization will have their yeah, Charity fair, eh? collect donations for the charity activities, especially their for their meta home in Stapa. Okay, welfare activities organized for Sri Jayanti Welfare Organization. We, they, they, they have this uh, activity called Eduate. They have it annually in uh, in the outskirts, not in our temple, in in some rural areas. Eh? They have the Educate Eduate for poor students and. They, have, they make receipts throughout the years to old folks' home, okay? And this photograph is a special photograph of their free clinic of volunteers. So you can see the doctors sitting there and all the free clinic volunteers. Okay, they open on Sunday mornings at a free clinic. And I think many of you, some of you all have visited the Sri Jayanti Meta Care Center in Stapa Kuala Lumpur, run by Sri Jayanti Welfare Organization. Huh? This is the old folks' home huh, run by... Sri Jayanti Welfare Organization. Then we have the Sri Jayanti Buddhist Institute, which is our Sunday Dhamma School. Okay, this is our logo for Sri Jayanti Buddhist Institute, study, practice, and realize. And this is our publicity photograph, uh, post uh, uh, flyer uh, for the Sri Jayanti Buddhist Institute. Okay, we have many different classes. We even have uh, classes for children below five years old, you know, called the Sunshine Play Group. Okay, the classes for the Sunshine Play Group takes place at the ground floor, huh? 
at a new temple building and the uh, classes for the higher ages, higher Rahula, Ananda, the higher ages takes place in the classrooms uh, at the first floor and the second floor of the new temple building. Uh, these are some group photographs of Sri Jayanti Buddhist Institute group photographs. This is a prize giving uh, day photograph at the end of the year. So some group photographs. This is a, a group photograph taken after Vesak uh, Day uh, uh, during the Sri Jayanti Buddhist Institute exhibition they have at the ground floor of the new temple building. Uh, they also make, uh, these are some activities they have during the Sunday Dhamma School. And they also made trips, uh, uh, fellowship trips for different, different destinations in Malaysia, fellowship trips. Bring the parents, uh, teachers, and children together. We also have a Sri Jayanti Youth Section. This is our logo for Sri Jayanti Youth Section. Cultivating our, our vision is cultivating noble friendships uh, between the youths. Okay. So the, Sri, the objective of the Sri Jayanti Youth Section is cultivating noble lives, cultivating noble friendships, cultivating self confidence, cultivating skillful means of good health, wealth, and happiness. These are some of the programs we had end of the year, huh? some group photographs of the Sri, Jan Sri Jayanti Youth Section. Huh? Throughout the years, are different, different photographs of the programs we had. And this is uh, some youth camps that we had in Frim, huh? in Kapong, Sri Jayanti Youth Camps in Frim, because the children wanted some programs to be conducted outside the temple. Huh? They wanted to go to the wilderness, uh, to the jungles. So uh, Frim is quite close to our temple, you know, in Kapong. And this special activity we have twice a year is bathing the main Buddha statue at the Shrine Hall, where we bathe the Buddha statue once before Vesa and once before Katina. This, uh, this is a very unique photograph of the Buddha statue in the main hall where you can see nothing is blocking it. Huh? You can see the beautiful Buddha statue with nothing blocking it. And uh, these are photographs of the Sri Jayanti Association Management Committee and also the devotees washing the Buddha statue. It's See them washing the Buddha statue. This will be taken one week before we start with this. And you see the group of us who did the washing, you know. And throughout the years in the past, we used to have novitiate programs. Especially we have used to have the young novitiate program, you know, for about 15 years. We had novitiate programs for nuns, okay, trainee nuns, and also for adults, uh, for big boost, okay, novitiate programs. And after the last day of the novitiate program, we all had been the part huh? Offering of arms to the monks, it uh, attracts a lot of devotees to the temple. And in somewhere in early in 2019, we we set up the Central Interfaith Committee. You know, this was initiated by the Saint Joseph Catholic Church. Uh, this is a logo created by Sri Jayanti Association, uh, uh, Javatan Kwasa Harmony Ruma Ruma Ibadat Center. To, this to bring the all the different temples in Jalan Central together. So the Buddhist temple is rep represented by our Sri Lanka Buddhist temple. The church is represented by the St. Joseph's Catholic Church. Eh? It's quite near our temple. The mosque is the uh, represented Masjid Al-Hidayah, which is further down the Sentula, uh, Jalan Sentula. And we also have the Sivan temple represent Hindu temple, which is next to our temple. We reached out to the Taoist temple in Jalan Sentul and also to the Sikh temple, but we didn't get any response from them. We had four meetings in the month of in the year 2019 to establish this, this, this committee. Okay, one meeting was held in Sri Lanka Buddhist temple, another one in St. Joseph Church, another one at the mosque, and another one at the Hindu temple. Huh? And the first pro program we had is a fellowship program that was organized at the Sri Lanka Buddhist Temple. And we had this program just weeks before we were closed for COVID-19 uh, in, the, in the year 2020. We had a fellowship program by the community members uh, from the church, the temple, Hindu temple, and the mosque uh, visited us. Uh, and we hosted a fellowship program for them. And throughout the year, we get visits by Muslim groups. Uh, Actually, at least at least three big Muslim groups come, and smaller groups, and even individual Muslim Muslims comes, especially because of uh, from the Islamic you know, uh, International University, you know, because of their inter, uh, interfaith studies. This photograph this is a group called uh, Unity. They, at least twice a year they bring, which is established in Central, 
bring groups of uh, Muslims to visit our temple. It's too far. And then this is a very unique photograph. This uh, Indonesian Muslim students, okay, who visited Malaysia, who visited our temple, you know, in early 2019. And most of our temple activities now, the major activities I mentioned, we, is available for devotees who cannot come to the temple, who stay in other states and overseas. We have a, a Facebook page a live stream of major temple events. Uh. Even the, the one that's coming, Field Party Day, we will be live streaming it on our Facebook. We, we used to have Dhamma talks every Thursday, 8.30 p.m. to 10 p.m., you know, uh, prior to the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, we haven't started our Dhamma talks yet, but we plan to start maybe next month if everything goes right, you know. But we might start at about, uh, at, on Sundays, uh, maybe from 1.30 to 3. We'll try out having Dhamma talks on Sundays. Please visit our temple official Facebook page. You know, there's so many photographs there and uh, uh, so many posters and videos to tell you so much more than what I can tell you. You know, now you know about our temple. Please visit and uh, and. But there's a lot of uh, there's a few illegal Facebook pages called Sri Lanka Buddhist Temple also, uh, Malaysia. So there's some illegal ones, but the one that is officially manage you can see the Sri Jayanti Association logo there huh? and uh, it's all it's up to date most of the others have died off already you know so visit us offer to know what's happening at our temple and currently we have the daily opening at the temple it's usually we used to open before pre-covid we used to open from 6 30 in the morning to about 10 30 you know uh, but nowadays uh, we decided to open from seven o'clock in the morning to 5 p.m every day because we don't have we only have three resident monks and we don't have enough in-house uh, uh, staff also at the moment, you know. So especially devotees come for the breakfast dining at 7.15 and lunch dining at 11.15 a.m. Breakfast dining at 7.15 a.m. and lunch dining at 11.15 a.m. And we also open the temple at night uh, from 7 to 10 for new moon and full moon. So please visit our temple. Okay? And uh, I'd like to thank for all the success of the Sri Lanka Buddhist temple, which is 105 years uh, old this year, huh? Sri Lanka Buddhist Temple in Sentul, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, to the members of the Mahasangha, Temple staff, Sri Jayanti Association, Sri Jayanti Welfare Organization, Sri Jayanti Buddhist Institute, Sri Jayanti Lady Section, Sri Jayanti Youth Section, and devotees to the temple. And with that, I also like to say my thanks to Buddhist Gem Fellowship and thanks to the President, T.J. Singh, and also Brother Ang and Sister Leng Sui, huh, who lies with me, you know, to, to organize this presentation. And also my thanks to all of you all, okay, who today uh, listened to my presentation.